Welcome back. I appreciate your help more than I can express. It couldn't have been easy running all over the city. <laughs> That's what friends are for, Branya. You don't sound like yourself. Is something wrong? Well, I'm fine. I just... I haven't rested in a while. There's just too much happening all at once. They're moving quickly. Bellabog is crawling with their agents. All they talk about is asset evaluation. The silver lining is that apart from the mine incident you mentioned, there haven't been any major conflicts in other areas. I suppose Topaz must have issued an order against harassing the citizenry. Still, that hasn't stopped panic from building. People are confused. They don't know where these strangers in black came from, nor what their intentions are. Did you manage to get in touch with Topaz again? We're curious to know what solution she has in mind. That's the reason I asked for you to come here. I need your advice. Look. Uh, it's... The contract Topaz sent to me a little while ago. There's a handwritten letter attached. Please, take a look at the contents. And then tell me your thoughts. Miss Branya, if you'll permit me to call you that, I'd like to share a story with you from my own life. In your eyes, the IPC may seem heartless or cruel, but in reality, we all have a story to tell. As for myself, I was born on a small, unremarkable planet at the edge of the galaxy, a place whose name is known only to the native inhabitants. My home planet was extremely resource-poor. To survive, people worked laboriously, manufacturing products for other civilizations in the galaxy, mostly in chemical or heavy industries. Given these circumstances, the natural environment of my home planet became increasingly harsh. I don't recall the exact moment when it happened, but people started wearing respirators just to walk down the street. All you could hear were the wheezing coughs of the people, day and night. My home was facing its demise. The relatively wealthy chose interstellar migration and started anew. The majority who stayed could only struggle on amidst sewage, acid rain, and dust, waiting for the end. Finally, one fateful day, the IPC arrived on my home planet. They had the technology to repair our planet's damaged environment. In return for their help, they asked for just one thing, that all inhabitants sign a contract which would make them employees of the IPC. Two years after signing the contract, the dark clouds and haze disappeared, and people began to take off their masks. After three years, vegetation and trees began to grow and thrive again. After five years, many animals, previously on the brink of extinction, reappeared. When I was finally old enough, I officially became a member of the Strategic Investment Department. I witnessed the changes that took place on my home world, and was determined to bring the same changes to many other worlds in the galaxy that were experiencing the same plight. I am writing to you, Miss Branya, with the genuine desire to express something important. I know freedom is precious to people, but in reality, there are things of much greater value, such as survival. How many generations of Bellabogians will it take to embrace the stars again without assistance? Who can guarantee that every future guardian will be as prudent and enlightened as you? 
How can you guarantee that a disaster such as the Stellaron Crisis will not descend upon Bellabog yet again? I have already negotiated the best possible deal for you. Once you sign this contract, all of Bellabog's debts will be forgiven. In addition, the IPC will set up a special team to support the reconstruction of Urillo 6. I can understand that for you, this is an extremely difficult decision, because you, and you alone, will bear the fate of all Bellabogians. But because of this, I believe that you will make the right decision. A decision that will truly benefit your people. Her words do sound quite sincere. What do you make of it? I'm inclined to agree. It's hard to imagine she wrote that letter just to deceive me. In any case, she wasn't wrong when she said this would be an extremely difficult decision. This planet's fate, the civilization it carries, everything that's happened here and everything that will happen, it all rests in my hands. This definitely can't and shouldn't be a decision made by me alone. thought has crossed my mind, and it comforts me to hear you say that. Right. I don't think it's fair for you to carry the weight alone. Why not discuss it with others first? Topaz hasn't given me much time to consider. She wants me to decide as soon as possible. I wanted to put it to a vote, and let all the citizens of both the Overworld and the Underworld have their say. But with such little time, I'm afraid that's a lost cause. I'll convene the Klopoth Fort Architects immediately to discuss the contract. As for the locals, I'd like you to gauge their stance on the matter. The people of Bellabog hold both of you in high regard. They'll most certainly be willing to tell you their thoughts. Yes, we need to move fast. We've got your back. We failed to convince Topaz, but this should be a piece of cake. Thank you, March. I'll assemble the ministers. Let's meet up here again later. All right. Well, if we want to make an informed decision, we need to hear from both the Overworld and the Underworld, right? paying us a visit. What's the occasion? Uh-oh. Sounds like something serious is happening. You'd better fill me in. What? How is that possible? I need a moment to wrap my head around this. Serval, we're racing against the clock. No time for head wrapping. <sighs> it's okay. I've thought it through. If it were up to me, I'd sign the contract. What? Hold on, are you serious? I thought you'd be against it for sure! Surprised? My reasons are pretty simple. Signing this contract would mean we no longer have to worry about surviving. For most of the residents here, especially those in the Underworld, that would be more than enough to persuade them. As for working for the company... <laughs> people need to work no matter where they are, right? If the IPC tries to take too many liberties, we can always rise up against them. You know, I've always longed for the stars since I was a child, which is why I devoted myself to science and the studying of the Stellaron. If someone told me that I could do whatever research I wanted with only a small price to pay, I probably wouldn't hesitate. I see. 
see. I suppose that makes sense. Thanks for your input. I'll make a note of your opinion. We meet again! How have you two been? Uh-oh. That look on your face tells me something's wrong. I hope it's nothing too serious. Sounds serious. I'm all ears. Really? You better not be making things up. I wish it were made up. Unfortunately, it's all true. We don't have much time, Pela. Branya wants to get everyone's opinion. Wait, you're telling me I have to make this huge decision on the spot? At least give me a few seconds to think it over. <sighs> okay, I think I've got it. If it were up to me, I'd probably agree to the IPC's conditions. Huh. Okay. Any particular reason? I've looked at some of the climate reports, and based on the data I've seen, it'll take three or four more generations for the snow to completely subside. And that's assuming no other disasters occur. I care more about those in the present than a future I can't be sure of. If the IPC is able to bring about immediate change, then I think that's a price well worth paying. Building a better world for future generations sounds great, right? But is it any fun for the engineers and architects who are directly involved in such a pursuit? I see. So compared to a distant and uncertain future, what you really care about is making sure the people around you have a good life. Thanks for your input. I'll make a note of your opinion. Is that the Trailblazers? It's been a while. I didn't think you'd be back in Bellabox so soon. It's been pretty hectic in the city lately. All these people dressed in black suddenly showed up, and even the Silvermane Guards have had trouble dealing with them. Do you need my opinion? I'm happy to help. So that's who they are. That's worse than I imagined. The Madam Guardian must be under a lot of pressure. Is there really nothing we can do to assist her? We are here to gather everyone's opinion on the matter. I know this is a little sudden, but we're running out of time. What's your take? Why, I'd refuse the contract, of course. There is no room for compromise. Just look at them. Arrogant, stomping around here as if they own the place. How can such people be trusted? Who's to say they won't breach the contract? Faced with this sort of coercion, we must resist them with all our might. Surrendering is not an option. You must warn the Madam Guardian not to allow herself to fall into their trap. A soldier's perspective is always valuable, Dunn. Thanks for your input. I'll make a note of your opinion. Uh, did we miss anyone in the overworld? I think we asked just about everyone we needed to. From what I've gathered, it seems like most people in the overworld are leaning towards signing the IPC's contract. We'd better hurry to the Underworld and see what Natasha and Zila make of it all. It's getting late. Where to now? What brings you two to the Underworld? And why the long face? Seems a little out of the blue, but... 
Since you came all this way, it must be urgent. Go ahead. <sighs> that is a lot of information to take in. Sorry, both of you. I, I know you're in a hurry, but I need a moment to think. No stress, Nat. Just tell us what you really think. <sighs> I've thought about it, and... Well, if I were Branya, I wouldn't sign it. I won't deny the offer on the table is a very tempting one. And if we refuse, Bellabog will not only have the burden of a huge debt, we may also incite the wrath of a very powerful force. But even so, a quote I read back in school came to me just now. Those who are willing to give up freedom for security will end up with neither. Living in the underworld has taught me that this phrase is true. I'd rather trek through the frigid snow plains than live in a beautiful cage. Wow, that's a pretty convincing argument. Another vote for the against pile. Thanks for your insight, Nat. <laughs> None other than the saviors of Bellabog. To what do I owe the pleasure? To be honest, I'm surprised you even remembered an old geezer like me. <laughs> but I can tell by the look on your faces you're probably not dropping by to say hi. Let me guess. Something to do with these unruly people in black showing up everywhere? Well, ask away. It just so happens I'm curious about them myself. Maybe I can be of some help. I see. That's a tricky situation, all right. A lot for anyone to handle, let alone someone as young as Lady Branya. Mr. Oleg, out of all the people we know in Bellabog, you have the most life experience. What do you think we should do? Want to hear the truth? I'm afraid great ambitions and lofty plans no longer hold much appeal for an old-timer like me. If this IPC does indeed possess the magical power to restore Bellabog back to its former self overnight, then I think the answer is clear. Have you considered the opposite? What about if we refuse? The reconstruction plan already sounds like an endless endeavor. And with the added burden of a massive debt, well, is that something we can manage on our own? What worries me the most is how Lady Branya will handle the backlash from her people. Will she be able to withstand the criticism? Is she prepared to carry the weight of a tarnished reputation for years to come? Huh. I guess I never looked at it from that angle. I wouldn't wish that title on anyone. Thank you for your thoughts, Mr. Oleg. Another vote for the four pile. went out for a walk with a lady called Topaz. What? Topaz? Do you know where they went? Uh, I'm not sure, but Mr. Svarog promised he'd be back soon. Uh, what now? Svarog's super logical. We should definitely get his opinion. True. Don Hung's always saying that Clara's really insightful for her age. Huh? Miss March, do you want to ask me something? Hmm... Uh... That's 
complicated. I don't know what to say. It's all right, Clara. No pressure. Just tell us how you feel about it. Hmm... I... I think if we have a choice for the future, it should be everyone's decision. Because... When I was playing with Hook, the moles, and the other kids, we talked about our dreams. Everyone has different dreams. If we accept Miss Topaz's offer, then doesn't that mean our dreams will never come true? Just taking away people's dreams like that. I don't know. It feels wrong. You're right. Children see the world as a place where anything is possible. Oh, just the thought of our lives being predestined from birth makes me shiver. Thanks, Clara. Your thoughts mean a lot to us. around has worn me out. So, the final conclusion is... The votes are completely even! Uh, I don't know what to do. Both sides have really compelling arguments. Oh, right! We have Nasdila! She's probably still in the Great Mine helping the miners. Come on, let's get going! Back so soon? Any news? Are, are you feeling all right? You look a little uneasy. <sighs> Important matter, huh? I can tell from your tone that this isn't gonna be a lighthearted chat. But I'm ready to hear it. I... I think I get it. At first, I thought it was just a few IPC ruffians overstepping their boundaries. Yeah, you didn't think the future of Bellabog was at stake, right? Right. I... I need a little time to process this. As it stands, the votes are even. Your opinion will make all the difference. In that case, I... I abstain. What? I thought about it. This responsibility rests on Branya's shoulders, not mine. No matter the choice she makes, she has far greater foresight than I do. She can see the bigger picture more clearly than I can. The vote is tied. If I were to give you my view, it would tip the scales and possibly impact her final choice. I'll respect whatever decision she makes, but it's not my place to make it for her. Understood, Zila. This is a difficult decision to make, and everyone feels differently about it. It's times like these that a leader must stand up and do what's needed. Right. It's Branya's decision. She knows what's at stake. She won't run away from her duty. I trust her wholeheartedly. If she asks you, just let her know my reasoning. She'll understand. Well, it's all in Branya's hands now. She has to make the final call. Right? I'm glad Bellabog has someone like her in charge. Uh, the time has come. Let's go fill her in. I'm curious to see how she's handling those Klopoth ministers. It's getting late. Where to now? Whoa, 
the fort's packed. I've never seen this many people here before. What? Oh, jeez, I can barely even hear myself think. March, you're back. So, what's the verdict? What do the people think? We talked to people in both the overworld and the underworld. The final result was a tie. I see. I suppose everyone has their own way of seeing things. I can't say I'm surprised. What was Zila's perspective on the matter? I should have known. That sounds like Zila, all right. Did you come to a conclusion with the ministers? Oh, it's so loud I can't tell what anyone's saying. It's pretty much the same situation here. Neither party is willing to compromise. The time has come to make a decision. This chaos cannot be allowed to continue any longer. Enough! All of you! I know what to do. Something to say to the Supreme Guardian. Uh, but uh, aren't you? Uh, Himeko? Wait, is that the real you or a hologram? <laughs> it's the real me, March. Real as they come. Miss Himeko, from the Astral Express? I. It's an honor. Thank you for all your help in our previous campaign. Things might have turned out differently without your support. If we had known of your arrival beforehand, the architects would have given you a proper welcome. I'm afraid that current circumstances are quite exceptional. I understand, Miss Rania. No need to explain. Your city is facing immense difficulties. My intention is simply to ensure that you have all the relevant intel. I hesitate to call it a solution, but I might have some information that might help. It is my hope that with this information, you will be better equipped as the Supreme Guardian to make a wise and informed decision. Information? Please. Tell me what you know, Miss Himako. I happen to have a friend with knowledge of Topaz. What Topaz said about her home world is indeed true, which is why she believes that the IPC's takeover of Bellabog is the only way of ensuring the city's survival. But there is one thing she intentionally left out. Not all worlds that have accepted the IPC's terms have been saved. You mean... Performing ecological reconstruction on a planet carries inevitable risks. According to the intel provided by my friend, the success rate for the ecological reconstruction of worlds using the IPC's technology is 63%. Only 63% of planets succeed? That's not exactly comforting. This is the overall average across all IPC projects. The success rate of projects personally handled by Topaz is above 80%. She's undoubtedly one of the most capable people in her field. I wanted to bring these numbers, these probabilities, to light. I think it's only fair that you know all the facts before making a decision. Ultimately, it's up to you, Supreme Guardian, to make the final call. I understand. Thank you, Miss Himako. This information is of great help. Regardless of how alluring their promises may be, this contract is nothing more than a gamble. As a leader, 
I cannot let the future of Bellabog hinge on a roll of the dice. Now that you've decided, I don't have to pretend to be impartial anymore. I think you're making the right choice, Branya. Astro friends, I have an idea. But for it to work, I'll need everyone's cooperation. I need some time to rally all the residents in the city. And then, I'll meet with Topaz again. Please locate her for me. It doesn't matter where she is or what she's doing. And if the IPC is still trying to take over Bellabog's assets, I ask that you do everything in your power to stop them. Don't worry. Leave it to us. We'll find her. It won't be easy dealing with her, but these two will help me get the job done. Bellabog's future is not for sale. And we'll never forget the friends who stood by us in our time of need. Not once, but twice. Stay safe, everyone. Jepard should be waiting for us in Rivet Town, right? Here we go again. Back to our old stomping grounds for another adventure. It's getting late. Where to now? The Supreme Guardian has briefed me on the situation and asked that I assist you in locating Topaz. Ready to enter Rivet Town? We'll go in together when everyone is set. Keep your guards up. We might run into IPC agents ahead. Destination reached. Wow, would you look at that. Huh. I never would have guessed it'd be here. But I don't see any mech or weapons. This place is completely surrounded by mountains. Surely they, they can't be. Affirmative. The weapons are concealed within the towering rock formations. No wonder we couldn't find the automaton factory. It was right under our noses all along. Wait a minute. You said these weapons have been hidden here from the very beginning? That means the architects of Urillo 6 never used them in their fight against the Legion. Correct. After the IPC departed from this world more than 700 years ago, no one has possessed the necessary knowledge for activating these weapons. The architects used the IPC blueprints to construct replica automatons. However, the overwhelming majority of the combatants, commanded by Elisa Rand, were human. I see. The stories about this world are truly captivating. I would like to ask you a question, Topaz. <laughs> You're awful polite for a big robot. Ask. Don't be shy. If the IPC does not intervene, this world is doomed. Are you convinced of this conclusion beyond any doubt? <sighs> yes. I've gone through countless case studies, and they all point to the same conclusion. Any world that comes into contact with the Stellaron is doomed. On the surface, things may appear to be getting better since the Astral Express lent a helping hand. But sooner or later, the underlying problems will resurface. 
A looming crisis can often lie hidden beneath the illusion of prosperity, unnoticed by many. Understood. Understood. That's it? You don't have any thoughts on the matter? Emotional readings indicate that your response is sincere and accurate. That is all I wish to confirm regarding this matter. While my opinion on the future of this planet may differ from yours, it ultimately holds no weight. I am merely a tool, not a decision maker. <laughs> if only my colleagues had the same self-awareness as you. Come on, Numbi. We've got some assessing to do. Topaz disappeared after leaving Rivet Town. In her absence, her subordinates flooded in and took over. The IPC soldiers are well equipped. It wouldn't be wise to fight them head on. Captain, what do you have in mind? You're right, Miss Himiko. We'll be using the Automaton Stealth Bomb to cover our tracks. Automaton Stealth Bomb? I'll explain later. Let's get moving. Look, down there! It's the IPC! Keep noise to a minimum, everyone. We don't want to alert the enemy to our presence. It's time to deploy the Automaton Stealth Bomb. Are you ready? Use the Automaton Stealth Bomb to wipe out the IPC threats. Remember, try to avoid being noticed. Remaining hidden will increase our chances of success. Shame we had to resort to this method. I've seen standard issue robots like these before. It's an IPC field team leader. Correct. The exterior is similar to the Grizzly, but its weapons and armor are more advanced. Hopefully, the automaton stealth bomb will still be effective. Let me know when you're ready. Are you ready? Use the Automaton Stealth Bomb to wipe out the IPC threats. Remember, try to avoid being noticed. Remaining hidden will increase our chances of success. I said be detected. It's all right. We pre Are you ready? Remember. To be honest, I didn't think it would be so powerful. This is the road that Topaz took when she left Rivet Town. Let's find her and tell her about Branya's decision. Uh, this time, the gloves are off! Miss 
Mr. Sparog? Are you all right? I hope Topaz and her IPC henchmen didn't hurt you. Greetings, outsiders. System functions are normal. I have had no conflict with the IPC's representatives. Such a result would be highly undesirable. Topaz is ahead. She had the means to force me to comply with her orders, but chose not to. From her perspective, the only way to preserve Bellabog is by incorporating it into the IPC. While I do not agree with her viewpoint, I lack the computational power to provide evidence to the contrary. While it is unlikely, I still encourage the avoidance of any potential conflicts. Unlikely potential? Meaning there could still be conflicts. Don't worry, March. The Express never pursues conflict as a first means. But if it comes down to it, we won't back down either. That's how it's always been. Himeko's right. As long as we can look at ourselves in the mirror and know we did the right thing, that's all that matters. Why would Topaz come here? Is she looking for something? It's possible. Many mysteries lurk beneath the surface of this world. Oh, hey there, Slowpokes. I was starting to think you weren't gonna show up. Hmm. This lady next to Miss March looks oddly familiar. Pleasure to meet you, Miss Topaz. I'm Himiko, the Astral Express's navigator. Oh, wow. <laughs> I remember now. The illustrious Miss Himiko. <laughs> Some of my colleagues dream about meeting you. Of course, the Nameless have quite the reputation. You're following in the footsteps of the great Akavili, after all. I'm pleased to see how well everyone's been getting along. Topaz, based on your greeting, I presume you have a good grasp of the current situation? Of course! The deadline has already passed, but Branya still hasn't signed the contract. I think I can guess what's holding her back. Please, don't misunderstand us, Miss Topaz. We have no intention of opposing the IPC or its board of directors. But we have very dear friends on Urillo 6. Standing idly by and watching them sign an unfair contract goes against everything the Nameless are about. Um, Miss Himeko, sorry for interrupting, but this doesn't sound like a negotiation. We needn't waste our time, March. She made her decision ten minutes ago. <laughs> There's no fooling the Astral Express. You're absolutely right. Differing views don't necessarily mean one person is right and the other is wrong. However, to keep things moving forward, there's usually only one solution. Uh-huh. What do you mean? My superiors have granted me the approval I need. <laughs> You're very curious about my work, aren't you? So many eager faces. I won't keep you in the dark any longer. Approval to launch an attack on the members of the Astral Express. The best kept secret to getting something over the line? Always be ready to turn the table. Go, Numby. <laughs> Projects under my wing have no room for error.
Lance ablaze. Lance! Forward! As easy as that. To the clouds! Naughty shot nap time. <laughs> Told you I could fight. I can Try that again. Guard. My turn. Spirit never. It's time. The wind is rising. Bolt. From the bow. Try that again. Not each nap time. It's time. <laughs> Lance ablaze. Lance! Forward! <laughs> just, just a little something. Think nothing of it. <laughs> time for... <laughs> is that gale force you can't run <laughs> that'll take more than me <sighs> thanks a lot lands at the ready <laughs> told you I <laughs> you I can take try it. that again Stay the course. To the cloud. <laughs> I'm on guard. <laughs> Told you I could fight. <laughs> Try that again. Lance ablaze. Lance! Forward! Go away! Watch yourself! As easy as that. Time for a shot. Nap time. <laughs> Told you I could fight. <laughs> Spirit never to kill. <laughs> Try that again. The wind is right. Bolt. From the bow. <laughs> Gotta try hard to watch this awesome move. Stay the course. Okay. That hurts. You can't run! Naughty child. That's better. Thank you, comrade. Yet? <laughs> Here! <sighs> Try that again. You can't run! <laughs> Yeah. 
<laughs> Lands at the ready. Lance ablaze. Lance! Forward! I told you I could fight. <laughs> Cute! Watch yourself! You can't run! Gotta try hard. Watch this awesome move! Just a little something. Think nothing of it. The wind is rising. Boat! From the boat! You can't run! Help! Naughty child. Nap time. Watch yourself! Lance ablaze. Lance! Forward! Told you I could fight. <laughs> Cute! <laughs> try that again. Gotta try hard. Watch this awesome move. Spirit never dies. <laughs> I'm okay. You can't run! Time for a shot. <laughs> Yet? <laughs> just, just a little something. Think nothing of it. My turn. <laughs> Here. <laughs> Try that again! Stay the course! Never dies. Gotta try hard some watch this awesome move. <laughs> the wind is rising. Boat. From the boat. <laughs> That'll take more than medicine. Hmm. <laughs> Just a little something. Think nothing of it. I'm on guard. Tough luck running into me. <laughs> Here. Watch Try yourself. that again. That hurts. You can't run. Stay the course. Naughty child. Lance ablaze. Lance! Forward! Lance at the ready. Hit! Nice. 
Teamwork. <laughs> just in just a little something. Think nothing of it. On guard. Watch yourselves. <laughs> Spirit never dies. Try hard. Watch this awesome move. <laughs> the wind is boat from the boat. Lands at the ready. It's just a little something. Think nothing of it. Lance ablaze. Lance! Forward! As easy as that. Tough luck running into me! The Astral Express is so highly regarded. Finished warming up? Now it's my turn. Stop! All of you, put down your weapons! Uh, Branya! Oh, you're here just in time. Things were about to get out of control. Uh, Supreme Guardian? I was starting to wonder whether you'd left the Express crew to fend for themselves. <laughs> That would hardly be becoming of you. I would never do such a thing. There was an important matter that required my attention. Uh, more important than this? Yes. I think you'll understand the significance once you see it. In short, I need you to help us evaluate our current progress. Help you? Hmm. That's interesting. I was under the impression you'd already decided to obstruct our operations here. I have read your letter word for word, Miss Topaz. And your childhood experiences truly touched me. Your hometown once experienced a similar catastrophe to Yarillo 6. So I can understand your perspective on the issue and the position you have taken. It's because of this empathy you have that I still hold out a glimmer of hope. Despite all that's happened, I hope we can still find common ground through peaceful means. I have to admit, talking to you is always such a pleasure. I apologize for my behavior just now. It, it was uh, inappropriate. I admire your determination, seeing as we've come uh, this far. I've changed my mind. I'll hold off a little longer and see what you have to show me. But remember, winning over the higher-ups won't be easy. I understand. That's why I've been taking things one step at a time. The first step was changing your mind. Members of the Express, we'll need your help, too. <sighs> what a dismal sight. This district... Have you been here before? 
Yes. This is where we put an end to it all. And then began again. That's right. Kyle, sorry for the delay. Are we clear to proceed? The path ahead is clear, Madam Guardian. You and your companions can proceed north without hindrance. Excellent. The mountain road ahead is a little treacherous. Watch your step. Let's go. What is this place? We've never been here before, right? <laughs> We've only recently discovered this domain. Let's keep moving forward. What I want to show you is just ahead. <laughs> Look, the people of Bellabok have not given up. just want to give them a chance. Do you two recognize that broken down machine over there? I thought you might. Miss Topaz, I know you've done a lot of research into Bellabog. I was wondering if there was any information on the engine of creation in your records? Not at all. Which is why I find it so incredible. Such a massive feat of engineering, yet there's not a single mention of it in any of the Strategic Investment Department's reports. I may know the reason why. The engine of creation was constructed solely by the people of Bellabog, without any external assistance. The project was led by the first Supreme Guardian, Alyssa Rand. While warriors fought on the front lines, the engineers worked tirelessly behind the scenes, designing and constructing it. So what you're saying is, the engine of creation was a weapon constructed by the Bellabogians themselves? Yes, but not entirely. The engine of creation was commissioned for combat shortly after its completion, and played a significant role in the battles against the Legion. But Alyssa Rand had a long-term vision, one that nobody anticipated. For a long time, this feat of engineering was codenamed the Geological Reconstruction Unit. It was actually given a much grander purpose, to help the Bellabogians rebuild their homeland and restore their world to its former glory, after driving away all those who threatened it. <sighs> Remarkable. A vision that would transcend both time and generations, Bellabogians. Madam Rand was truly an inspiring leader. Uh, not to take away from the Supreme Guardian in front of me. <laughs> She's quite the inspiring leader as well. Uh, thank you. But I didn't really do anything. All I did was bring the people of Bellabog together and make them aware that our hard-earned freedom was under immense threat once again. If we want to preserve this freedom, we must act and show those who doubt us that we, Bellabog, have the will and the ability to control our own destiny. The outcome of our mobilization speaks for itself. The children of Bellabog have made their decision. They have chosen to preserve this homeland with their own two hands. I must say, I didn't anticipate this at all. I'll fight for this opportunity for you, Branya. I shouldn't have conflated your own circumstances with my childhood. That was a serious lapse of judgment on my part. 
My world never had a resolute leader, so people gave up on the idea of saving themselves long ago. But your civilization has persisted through the snow and storms for 700 years. A truly admirable feat. Then, are you willing to retract your previous decision? As for the debt, we'll find a way to gradually repay it. But it'll take some time. Unfortunately, the acquisition of Urillo 6 is a strategic decision that's been approved by the IPC's top brass. Even if I wanted to overturn it, convincing them would be extremely difficult. Unless... Don't worry, Miss Topaz. Myself and all of the Nameless aboard the Astral Express are willing to vouch for this world. <laughs> Fantastic. That might just work. As for the uh, reports and potential accountability, <sighs> I'll handle it. Topaz, you mentioned accountability. Uh, don't worry, it's it's nothing I can't handle. There are more important things than titles and ranks. Finding the best solution is what matters most. If that's what they want to do, then so be it. I've long passed the stage of working just for money. Uh, thank you so much for all you've done. I never thought we'd drag the Express into a crisis again. Much less one that might cause a rift between you and the IPC. Rift? I wouldn't go that far. Also, it's me who's mostly to blame. I didn't keep my subordinates in check. Oh, thinking about a career change? Sure thing. I'll put in the best words I can. I'm glad we're able to discuss some lighter topics. Well, you all need some rest after everything you've been through. I have arranged rooms for you all at the Goethe Hotel. Miss Topaz, if you need somewhere comfortable to stay. Ah, I appreciate the offer, but I need to head back and deliver my reports. It's been great getting to know you both. I hope we can work together again in the future. Only next time, under better circumstances. It's getting late. Where to now? I've been wondering... Did you figure out what was happening here on Bellabog, Himeko? <laughs> well, you know, keeping an eye on the crew is just another part of a navigator's job. March was looking forward to the Soulworm Festival for ages. Looks like she's missed her chance this time. I never thought this trip would be so... <sighs> tiring. <sighs> Time for bed. In light of the events that have transpired, we will be taking the following disciplinary measures against you. Your rank will be demoted from P45 to P44 with corresponding adjustment to your basic salary. All bonuses for the current cycle will be revoked, including stock options and performance bonuses. You will need to submit an additional report regarding this incident to Diamond. If you have any objections to this penalty, you may also file an appeal in writing. I have no objections. Understood. Is there anything else anyone would like to add? 
If there are no further remarks, this meeting is concluded. <laughs> oh, you only got demoted one rank? Phew, you dodged a bullet there. Pretty big project to mess up on. Someone must be looking out for you. Oh, they've already left the call. Ugh, this voice changer is driving me crazy. Let me turn it off. Adventurine, why are you still on the line? Hey, what's with the hostility? It's not like I'm your boss. Oh, wait. I guess I am now. <laughs> my apologies. I'm still getting used to my new place in the hierarchy. Can I help you? If you've got something to say, say it already. Oh, nothing important. Just checking in on you. I told you Urillo 6 would be a high-risk, low-reward case. Why do you even bother? In our line of work, having a kind heart can be more of a liability than an asset. If you're not careful, you'll end up leading yourself down a dead-end road. Anything else? If not, I'm hanging up. Wait. Hold on a minute. Don't hang up. I get it. You're not in the mood for this conversation right now. Okay. How about this? Something that might interest you. While you were enjoying your playtime on Urillo 6, Diamond was busy taking care of the head honcho of the Building Material Logistics Department. That's why he didn't attend today's meeting. A... Terravan? That's right. The renowned Terravan. One of the seven board members. He's throwing his support behind us instead of the marketing development department for once. <laughs> Oswaldo won't be laughing anymore. Diamond's been a great help to both of us. Your antics on such a crucial day can't exactly have painted the strategic investment department in a good light, you know? <laughs> Since you get the point, let's get down to business. I'm currently at Pierpoint. There's a major deal that could affect the whole department. I just so happen to need a reliable project manager for the job. What do you say, old friend? Huh. And what prompted the mighty Aventurine to start collaborating with others? Panacone. What else? What? <laughs> that's right. Now that's the kind of reaction I was hoping for. Uh, hold on a minute. Diamond picked you for this project? I, I was expecting someone like Opal or uh, Obsidian to handle it. At least someone higher than rank P46. Honestly, who knows? The family has some pretty questionable characters. If you ask me, doing business with them is a lost cause. But as we both know, the IPC does more than just business deals. Guess it's my time to shine. So, how about it? This is a rare opportunity. Consider it. You never know, you might even be able to make up for your blunder on your Rillo 6. Uh, I'll get back to you later. <sighs> Seems like it's just one wild ride after another. I hope I made the right decision this time. <laughs> the snow is mesmerizing.